Hi friends, now we will discuss on the topic coal as a source of energy. As discussed in the previous module, it is clear to us that coal is mostly used in India for the production of electricity, around 60 percent electricity is produced from the coal. Now, you will see why, why the coal is energy resource, what are the properties and what are the composition of it, what is the availability and what, how the coal is formed, all those things we will discuss in this module and the contents of this module is coal and its composition, origin of coal, its rank and energy content availability of coal and energy possibility from it, types or grades of coal and properties of coal, coal pricing and coal for energy production some issues in India. Let us say what the coal is, as you know that it is a solid fossil fuels which is available under the earth's crust and it has been originated from plant bodies. So, partially the plant body was decomposed and which has been converted to coal through geological actions at high temperature and pressure for million of years long reactions. This is a black or brownish sedimentary rock normally occurring in rock strata in layers which is called coal bed or coal seam. It is composed of carbon along with hydrogen and some amount of other elements like nitrogen, sulphur etcetera. So, from plant body to coal formation this has taken place through different steps. So, we can get different type of coal like say peat which is not considered as coal, the first phase of coal qualification process, then lignite, then we get bituminous and then higher quality is anthracite. So, this process through which the biomass plant biomass has been converted to coal is called qualification process and different types are lignite, bituminous and anthracite these are also called the rank of coal and this bituminous category is also divided into sub bituminous and semi bituminous. Now, if we see the compositions and the properties, then we see that carbon content is different from one rank to other rank and higher the carbon content we get higher the heating value which is desirable for energy production. So, in short we can classify the coal in high rank coal and low rank coal. So, high rank coal it includes bituminous and anthracite whereas, low rank coal includes lignite and sub bituminous. If we see here this figure if we consider it is very clear to us that in coal number of aromatic rings are available. So, it is a complex structure having large number of aromatic rings and phenolic, ketonic and nitrogen containing compounds are available in it. If we go to higher rank or more the age of formation of the coal, we will get more carbon, more heating value but if we go to the lower age or the low rank coal, then we see that moisture content and volatiles are higher. So, at plant we have more, more volatiles and more moisture. So, gradually this reduces with the rank of higher rank of coal. Here for lignite we have carbon content 25 to 35 percent, for sub bituminous it is 35 to 45 and bituminous 45 to 86 percent and anthracite 86 to 98 percent. This is some typical example of the coal composition. 
Similarly, oxygen is 30 to 20 percent for lignite and 20 to 10 percent for subbituminous, 10 to 5 percent for bituminous and 2 to 1 percent for anthracite. And we see the heating value, anthracite is having the highest heating value more than 35,000 kilojoule per kg, whereas the lignite the lowest one 9,000 to 19,000 kilojoule per kg. And S content is also different, it is very interesting to see here the bituminous coal available in India is having very high S content and that is the major issue we have to consider and we have to develop some techniques indigenously for the utilization of Indian coal. But in India coals are mainly bituminous or lignite and S content is very high. Now, we will see what are the theories are available on the production of coal from the plant biomass. There are two theories, one is in situ theory and another is your drip theory. So, in situ theory supports that the coal is produced from the plant biomass which are grown in swamps or bogs and subject to widespread submersion of the huge amount of this biomass, plant biomass, the sedimentary deposits took place and it converts to coal. And drift theory says that coal is formed largely from the terrestrial plant materials growing on dry land, not in swamps or bogs. And the original plant debris was transported by water body and deposited under water in lakes or in sea by flood or tsunami like situation with very high wind speed or the high velocity of uh, that is your 800 kilometer per hour. And over time the chemical and physical properties of the plant remains were changed by geological action and it has been reported that 15 to 20 meter of plant depth is converted to 1 meter of coal seam. But in India we have 30 meter seam, so it is expected that so around 600 meter plant biomass layer was formed at the starting of this coal. And the qualification time is as high as 220 million years which is required and the earth is 4.6 billion years old. So, this is the different theory on the production of coal. Now, with the increase in the rank of the coal, what we can see that carbon content is increased. This table shows us that carbon content is increased from cellulose to graphite. Graphite is completely carbon 100 percent carbon and anthracite is 91. And if we see the relative amount of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, then also we see that hydrogen and oxygen gradually decreases as you go from cellulose to anthracite. As a result, the heating value increases. So, if we want to produce energy, obviously we will be preferring the high heating value containing coal. So, price will also be different for different types of coal. So, we will discuss this later on. Now, we will see the availability of the coal. Is the coal available everywhere equally across the globe or not? This table gives us that information. It is very clear that coal is available in higher amount in specific regions in some in some countries as mentioned here. Important countries are Eastern USA, United Kingdom, Germany, Poland, Russia, China, Australia, India, South Africa, Western Canada, Western USA and Colombia. So, these are the different geological age that 275 to 320, somewhere it is 50 to 70 somewhere 50 to 150 it is available. So, in India we are having 
250 to 280 as per this report. The age of the coal is 250 to 280 for India, but another report says that we have some uh, less mature coal also. I will give you that information. Here we will see the availability of coal in India. As per 2014 report, which is reported by Geological Survey of India GSI, India has 301.56 billion tons coal reserve and out of this coal we have different types that is prime coking coal 5.313 billion tons, medium and semi coking 28.76, non coking 266 and tertiary coal 1.49. This tertiary coal is age is less. And where the coal is available in India? These are the states where it is available. So, if we see this table, it is very clear that Jharkhand, Orissa, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal within these states most of the coal is available in the country. Other states where it is available that is Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra. And the amount of coal which is available in the country that can serve electricity for 600 years. And this coal if we see in India one is 250 to 325 million years old that is called Gondwana coal and another is tertiary coal that is 10 to 60 million years. And when we will be using the coal we need one reactor system and for the operation of coal for its conversion to energy we need a specific particle size and we need its uh, its mechanical strength, but coal does not have much mechanical strength and uh, it can be broken down into small dust and particles. So, for its use in furnace coal is converted to coke in some applications. So, that cokes are the solid carbonaceous material derived from destructive distillation of low S low sulphur bituminous coal. So, why from bituminous coal or not from others because it contains bitumen, bituminous contains bitumen type material which helps to bind and give strain to the coke. Now, if we classify the coke uh, the coal then we can classify it on the base of rank that I have already we have discussed. Apart from that we can classify based on coking properties whether it is has coking property or not, whether we can produce coke from the coal or not or semi coking it may be coking, it may be semi coking or it may be non coking. And on the base of age also just I have discussed that is Gondwana and tertiary. Apart from these some coals are there around the world which are not conventional coal. In these the seam is very limited, it is very scattered and less amount of coal is available and that is also of not uh, very high quality. So, those are called un unconventional coal, one is canals and another is turbinates. So, canals are found rarely and the high hydrogen content it has and burn with smoke and bright flame and does not fall in any category. And this turbinates this is known as boghead coal also it is named after Tarvin hill of Scotland and this is rich in paraffins oil. Now, how can you grade the coals? We need coal for different applications we may use it for simple energy productions in thermal power plant or we may use it for st steel production in steel industries. So, when we are interested to use it in steel industry then it requires more strength, more density and we can steel grade 1 and steel grade 2 we can classify and that classification is based on ash content. If the ash content is less than equal to 15 percent then it is steel grade 1, 
if it is 15 to 18 percent then it is steel grade 2 and wasari grade which is used for the energy production in thermal power plant then we can get grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 and grade 4 and grade 3 we have 18 to 21 percent of S in the grade 2 we have 21 to 24 percent of S grade 3 we have 24 to 28 percent of S and grade 4 we have 28 to 35 percent of S. Now, grading of non cooking coal. So, non cooking coal grading is done not only basis of S, it also considered the moisture content and this moisture content is determined at 60 percent relative humidity and 40 degree centigrade as per BIA standard. So, we can classify non cooking coal into grade A, grade B, grade C, grade D, grade D, grade F and grade G and S and moisture content total value not exceeding 19.5 for A category which is having heating value of around 6 to 0, 0 kilo calorie per kg and for B category the S and moisture falls in 19.6 to 23.8 and its heating value falls between 5600 to 6200 kilo calorie per kg. For C category the S and moisture content is 23.9 to 28.6 percent similarly the energy the heating value is 4940 to 5600 and D category the S and moisture content 28.7 to 34 percent whereas the heating value is 4200 to 49 4 0 kilo calorie per kg. For category E the S and moisture content is 34.1 to 40 percent and the heating value 3360 to 4200 kilo calorie per kg. So, F category it is the S and moisture content is 40.1 to 47 percent whereas, the heating value is 2400 to 3360 kilo calorie per kg and for G category the S and moisture content is 47.1 to 55 percent and useful heat is your 1300 to 2400 kilo calorie per kg. So, in this case if we go down then the heating value is decreasing and we see here the moisture and S is also increasing. So, this will be having different applications and different price. Now, grading of semi cooking and weekly cooking coal the, we can have grade 1 and grade 2 that is also on the basis of S and moisture content. So, if the moisture content is not exceeding 19 percent grade 1 and if it is 19 to 24 percent it is grade 2. Now, in thermal power plant we produce flue gas by the combustion of coal in presence of air but if we do not apply air just heat it in absence of air then coal will be converted to three products one is your coke another is your coal tar that is liquid and another is your coal gas. So, both solid liquid and gas will be getting this coke which is produced here that will be having superior quality with respect to coal and can be used for steel production and this coke is a grey hard and porous material and it is used as a fuel and reducing agent in smelting iron ore in a blast furnace. So, iron ore iron oxide is converted to iron metallic iron here and coal tar it is a liquid product which is produced by heat application on coal in absence of oxygen and here the liquid product contains different types of organic compounds variable mixtures of phenols polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons PHs and heterocyclic compounds there are around 200 substances are there in case of coal tar and it is a black liquid and extremely highly viscous and which melts naphthenic and aromatic hydrocarbons. 
then coal gas contains some combustible gas and non combustible gas it may include hydrogen carbon monoxide methyl and volatile hydrocarbons also so this way we can get different product from coal and which can be used for different application we can also use it in thermal power plant through combustion or we can also use it through gasification to produce syn gas so for the application of coal in different routes we need to understand the quality of the coal which one will be suitable for which applications so different types of properties are tested and the values are compared and the coal is selected so those properties of coal i have mentioned here that is caking and coking properties heating value that is very important for energy application moisture content volatile matter content fixed carbon mineral matter or ash content and what are the chemical compositions that is elemental analysis chns oxygen sulfur phosphorus iron etc particle size and porosity caking index swelling index and petrographic analysis as i mentioned that particle size and porosity is important for the operation in reactor system now we'll see the caking and coking what is caking and what is the coking when we apply heat to coal in absence of oxygen it swells some of the coke coal swells and it leaves coherent residue this property of the coal is called a caking properties and in some caking coal the remain residue is coherent and it has metallic luster as well as all properties of the commercial coke and that coal is called coking coal so caking coal and coking coal if we compare all coking coals are caking coal but all caking coals are not coking coal necessarily some of the caking coals will produce coke so all coking coals are caking but the reverse is not always true now we'll discuss on heating value so if we use coal and combust it then it will release heat that will be used for any heat application now amount of energy available in usable form from unit amount of coal is its heating value so what is happening if we think about the electricity production so we are we are combusting coal then coal flue gas is produced then flue gas is used to produce steam from the water and then steam is again used for the electricity production in steam turbine so what is my available energy available energy in terms of electricity in terms of heat here so when the steam is formed that steam may be at higher temperature or steam may be at lower temperature at ambient condition so when the steam is converted to ambient temperature the water will condense and the usable energy which are we are able to extract from the steam will be higher and the maximum and that is called higher heating value or gross heating value but net heating value in which condition we are using it the net amount of energy we are getting from it that is called low heating value or useful so how can we consider and the make the relationship between high heating and low heating value obviously obviously the the latent heat of vaporization of water is playing a role if we reduce this one from the high heating value we can get the low heating value of the coal we'll make more discussion in next chapter or next lecture uh, how to determine the heating value 
Now, we are coming to moisture content. So, coal has some moisture. Now, if you see in coal we have pure coal, then we have mineral matter, we have that is converted to ash and pure coal is having volatile matter and fixed carbon and it also have some moisture that is total moisture. So, moisture may be available at the surface of the coal or it may be available in the pores inside it that is inherent property of this or it may be available in the microstructure of it. So, we can get different types of moisture the surface moisture that means, water which is available at the surface of the coal is called surface moisture and Indian coals are having more surface moisture because the inherent moisture which is available inside the coal that which is the integral part of coal seam in its natural state that which includes the water pores, but excludes the macroscopically visible fractures this inherent moisture in Indian coal is less and surface moisture is high because water is added for its transportation and storage. And then another is equilibrium moisture, equilibrium moisture is determined as per BIA standard 1350 and we have to heat the coal sample at 40 degree centigrade under 65 percent relative humidity and the moisture content is determined is called equilibrium moisture. So, total moisture T m is equal to inherent moisture plus surface, surface moisture we get and another is your equilibrium moisture. So, three types of moisture so we have got surface moisture, inherent moisture and equilibrium moisture and residual moisture in term it, it remains in coal after you are drying a sample and minor heating in a moisture oven to 10 to 15 degree centigrade above the ambient temperature. So, what are the basis for reporting coal properties data and their conversion that we are going to discuss now. So, coal which we have got from the coal seam it has come to the laboratory we are analyzing it and we are getting the compositions and that is as received basis, but we can air dry it and measure the compositions again we will get air dried basis and dry basis this compositions are measured after drying the coal sample as specific condition and then dry and as free basis it will be dried and then as has to be removed from it during the calculation of the percentage composition and dry and mineral matter free basis compositions are expressed in percentage excluding the mineral matter and moisture. So, the value of any compositions in as received basis is lesser than any other basis. One some example is shown here. So, we have a coal with proximate analysis moisture is 1.1 percent as 5.63 percent volatile matter 37.26 percent and fixed carbon 56 percent. So, if we want to convert it into dry and as free basis. So, here in this case we see moisture and as we are having 1.11 percent plus 5.63. So, 6.74 percent we are having moisture and as. So, we have to reduce it we have to leave it. So, if we leave it so remaining we will be having fixed carbon 56 percent. So, 56 divided by this volatile plus fixed carbon these are not available. So, we are getting 60.04 percent. We can also get it by this 56.0 into 100 divided by 100 minus these two moisture and ash that 6.74. So, that is also we are coming 60.04 percent and similarly the volatile matter content we are getting 39.95 and 39.95 percent. Other properties caking index. So, caking index is gives an indications how suitable the coal is for caking its value is a 20 to 24 and uh, minimum index should be 13 and maximum should be 24. Another property swelling index it also gives some indications the how suitability is for coke formation. So, swelling index 2 to 5 is ideal one and high swelling index value is not desirable 
it will create problem during operation. Petrographic analysis and reflectance, this is one properties which indicates the how the coal will be able to produce coke, because a, a, a coking coal should have 60 percent of vitrine which, which contributes on the coke formation and 40 percent is a non reactive constituent. And this value 1.3 to 1.5 of this spectrographic analysis reflectance value, reflectance value is suitable and it and um, coking property develops in coal when this value is 0 0.9 to 1.3. Now, pricing of coal as you have mentioned somewhere that pricing is very important and depends on the quality. So, pricing is done on the basis of equilibrium moisture. So, that moisture is considered and with the increase of more moisture the price decreases because the gross calorific value decreases with moisture content. This is the empirical relationship which shows that uh, with 1 percent increase in T m total moisture the del G C V the changes in gross calorific value is 6.1 plus 0 0.01 into gross calorific value. So, now we are coming to some issues for the coal use in India. So, Indian coals are mainly bituminous or lignite type, so it has high ash content and high moisture content, high surface moisture, but low inherent moisture. So, these are the basic problems for Indian coal. Less inherent moisture makes it difficult to operations also. The like imported coal, they are having high inherent moisture, they are not having surface moisture. So, this is easy to transport, it is easy to operate, but Indian coal are having difficulty with respect of moisture as well as ash content. So, we need our own technology for its application and uh, it has some contamination also, mercury contaminations 0 0.1 ppm, arsenic 1.4 to 71 ppm, selenium 3 to 3 ppm in coal. So, these are the drawback of Indian coal, we need our own technology for its application. Apart from this, we also have ground water and surface water contamination issues from the coal. So, all those things we have to take into consideration for developing any new technology or application of Indian coal in cleaner technology routes. Thank you very much.